Anyway, thank you, Patty. Uh, yes, yeah, so the next kind of sessions that we're gonna have are gonna be related to some of the educational opportunities that are out there and very near to you. So um, as Patty was talking about and actually Fred was talking about, we do want to try and give you the, we want you to know that it's not just going to college. There are apprenticeships, there are all sorts of ways to get to where you wanna go. And I think you know, it was said earlier that um, when you go get a degree and, and you're so stressed out about what kind of degree do I have to get? Well, for the State Department, it didn't matter what degree you got. It only mattered that you got a degree and that you showed that you had that perseverance to go through and finish something. And that's what they were looking for. So um, I think sometimes we get hung up on the little questions, um, which seem like they're huge questions, but like I've got to have the perfect plan to get from point A to wherever I want to be five years from now or 10 years from now. If we just kind of look at what we think we want to do and start moving in that direction, we're going to have a whole lot of success. And it looks different for every single person. So with that in mind, uh, we do have, um, for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to see a, pre a presentation from Clover Park Technical College, from Northwest Indian College, and from University of Washington Tacoma to talk a little bit about some of the opportunities that are available there how to pay for it, um, just all that kind of stuff and what kind of programs they have to offer. So first up, we have Daisy Martinez from Clover Park. Daisy, are you here and ready to go? Yes, I am. Thank you so much. Um, I do have some slides that I want to share. Oh, perfect. And this is working too. Um, so let me just get this started and then I'll continue. Can everybody see my slides right now? Just a thumbs up or a yes? Okay, perfect. All right, so my name is Daisy Martinez. I'm the manager of student diversity outreach at Clover Park Technical College. I am so motivated by everything everybody has shared today. And I hope you all as students are also um, really motivated and just eager to continue your education pathway. Um, I'm here today to get, let you know about all the different opportunities that Clover Park offers regardless of what pathway you wanna take on after high school or even before. So just to let you know a little bit background about Clover Park. So we are a technical college. What does that mean and how is it different from a community college or even university? A lot of the programs that we offer are no longer than two years. And a lot of the things that we have, it's a lot of hands-on training or hands-on experience that you will get. I will go in depth and speak about the, um, some of the programs that I saw that you all are interested in, uh, that you may want to learn more about, but also all of the other ones that you may want to know. Um, we are located mainly in Lakewood, Washington, uh, but we also have another campus in Puyallup, or we call it the South Hill Campus. That one specifically has everything that has to do with airplanes or air, all of that, um, aerospace and aviation but we have over 47 programs within um, you know, all of the programs that you can go into at Clover Park. In addition, we also have the Northwest Technical High School, a radio station, um, and, and other options that you can go into as well. I will go over that too. So now to describe a little bit about the academics here, we have the School of Aerospace and Aviation. So there's seven different ones. That's one of them. Then we also have science, technology, engineering, and design, automotive and trades, advanced manufacturing, nursing, health science and human services, business and personal services. So all of those seven areas of study have those 47 programs that we offer. If you have questions, please feel free to add to the chat. And if someone can just help me uh, with the chat as well, um, and I can answer them as we go or at the end. I do have a short video that I wanna share with you all um, so that way you can get a little bit more of, uh, get to see the college, get to see what the campus looks like. And I will also speak briefly on the changes that have happened with COVID right now. So let me uh, play that. It should be set for audio as well. So if I can just have a thumbs up or just tell me if you can hear it, starts with music and then it goes into the video. Can you hear that? Yes. It's 
the Clover Park program just popped out at me instantly because it seemed so well thought out. The relationships I have with the instructors are great. It's beyond just learning. It seemed like they really care about you. The best thing about this program is the fact that you are already thrust into a working environment. It's so broad. It gives you a lot more freedom to find something that you really want to do. Entering back into school, I was so happy to be welcomed into this group of just this variety of people. The school makes the process really doable, learning it firsthand and actually being in the lab. I came across this program at Clover Park. I think that that was probably one of the smartest decisions that I could have made. They really give you real experience, and I think some schools lack that, to be able to experience what it's like in this scenario. My experience at CPTC is beyond what I expected. We have people that can actually tell us that, hey, this is how it works, for real. I realized that I had finally found a place where everything that I do for fun is going to earn me credits and is going to earn me a career. <laughs> All the knowledge I gained in this course, it changed the way I look at how everything is built. They just make class really fun. They make it enjoyable. What I feel the most proud about is I didn't just come to Clover Park to learn. I killed it. You don't have to lose who you are in order to do this. You can still be you. You can be intelligent. You can work hard and you can have fun. All right. So I, the, the reason why I really like to show this video, one is because it really highlights a lot of the programs that we offer, but you also get to hear from students. Those are experiences from students that you get to hear and that you get to, to see if you can fit in this um, in this culture that we have at Clover Park, right? Uh, one of the things that someone mentioned here earlier is that what might have worked for them may not work for you. And that's why you wanna make sure that you explore, that you ask questions, that you attend events like this. So that way you know the things that you're interested in, but also you find out about the things that you don't, you're not interested in and that you may not like. So all of those things are gonna help you to make a better decision once, you're, once you have to make that decision or transition into um, college or whatever career pathway you're looking into. Now, we are open admission, which means that anybody that applies at Clover Park will get um, accepted regardless of what grades, what a GPA, what test scores you took in the past, that does not matter. If there's any classes that you need to take, um, to be able to get to that level of that program, they will help you to get to that level so you can go into it. So don't worry about that. Um, I am checking my time as well. So if you feel that I'm going a little bit fast, please just let me know. But um, more questions, I will leave my information too. So that way I can keep going with the presentation and the most important things. I know that they're gonna share this as well later on. Now, in, in the next three slides, you're gonna see all of the different programs that we offer. And you will also see in here, all of those wages that we added in there, that's for Washington State, just right after completing your degree. Doesn't mean that's how much, you, how much you're gonna make. Maybe other companies will pay more. That's just an average that people will make. So I'm just gonna go through them. So in this um, aerospace and aviation, automotive and trades, we have all of those other programs too you can go into um, nursing or the medical field. Sometimes we just think that it, it's either nurses or doctors, but there is so much more. And I know one of the other presenters also spoke on um, the admin or the uh, administrative side of it, right? For instance, it could be um, the health unit coordinator. That can be one of them, or maybe as a pharmacy technician. Um, all of those things you can also do in the medical field, but not necessarily providing um, services uh, like right away to a patient. Now we also have advanced manufacturing too. Um, it has to 
they work a lot with airplane parts. So you're looking into industries like that as well. Um, that can be one of the things that you want to look more into. Health and human development, um, we have dental assistant, human services, um, we want to work with children as well. Then we, we move over into the science, technology, engineering, and design. All of everything that has to deal with graphic design, entertainment, um, computers, technology, all of that is housed on the, under this, um, this program that we have as well business and personal services. So if you're looking more into the business side or personal services, we have all of those too uh, with accounting, cosmetology, culinary arts, pastry arts, retail management, and even aesthetics or skincare. Now, what are some of the changes that have happened and some of the resources that we offer? So programs are continuing. It does mean that we, ha we have changed the way that we, we operate because of COVID-19. Um, classes are smaller now, which means that they had to create classes in the morning and in the afternoon. That way they could break up um, into smaller groups because there is a lot of hands-on training that is the essence of a technical college. So we're following all of the regulations from the Department of Health, as well as what the governor has allowed us to do as, um, at the college. So all of those regulations are in place at the college for classes that do meet in person. However, there is also quite a bit of online learning, um, just like probably a lot of you are doing right now. Um, so those classes that may be general education classes are online. Um, but always, always make sure that you either check with one of us at the college or the website for any changes. As you have seen, things can change from one day to the other. Now, what are some of the services that we have um, to support students in um, the financial aspect? Clover Park has a program that is called the 13-Year Scholarship Program. What this program does is that if you graduate from a Pierce County High School, you are able to go into this program without even having to apply. As long as you let us know that you graduated from a Pierce County High School, you, you may qualify for some funding. Um, so what this does is that if, if you qualify, if you complete your financial aid and you qualify for whatever amount, if it, even if it's just $1 for financial aid, the 13-year scholarship program comes in place and covers the rest of it for the first year at, at, your, at the college. Um, if let's say that your financial aid covers all of it, the 13-year scholarship helps you with books, transportation, and other services at the college too for the first year. So all of those things you can get assistance with. Plus, we also have in-house scholarships. There's some that can go from um, like $600 up to $1,000. So making sure that you're always connecting with the college that you're interested in, that way you can see if they have any scholarships Sometimes we have partnerships as well. And I know that we have a partnership with the uh, uh, Makushu tribe as well, where we have a, um, a scholarship for Native Americans. The system that they utilize is that you just apply uh, to that scholarship program itself. And then from there, however you answer the questionnaire, that's what they will partner you with. Um, so just making sure that you know that most colleges have um, in-house scholarship as well is something that you wanna make sure that you um, take note of. We also have workforce office in there, which if anybody in your family is receiving any, any sort of uh, public assistance or um, government assistance, you may be able to qualify if um, students are parenting. There's so many ways that you can get funding. So making sure that you um, check in with us so that way you, you um, get maximized the most uh, for financial assistance. Um, and as well, your financial aid forms, making sure that you complete them, especially if you're a senior now, making sure that you do that as soon as possible. Um, now, the last um, slide here is for important dates that you wanna keep in mind. So if you're a senior and you're looking to um, start college in fall of, sorry, that was supposed to mean uh, 2021, left the one out. Um, registration opens May 14th, 
And then financial aid deadline is August 27th, tuition deadline September 13th, and the first day of the quarter is September 27th. So keeping track of deadlines, regardless of what college you decide to go to, it's going to be something that you want to keep in mind. Again, financial aid is one of them that you want to keep always, always in mind and completing it as soon as possible. Now, what can be the first step that you can do to make sure that you get connected to one of us? You want to make sure that you either email me and my email is right in here. I will add it to the chat as well. Or you can give us a call or contact the admissions at cptc at edu email so that way we can give you more information and we will be able to connect you to whomever you need to be connected at the college. I don't have a problem at all if you ever can, um, uh, reach out to me, uh, whatever question you may have, even if I'm not able to answer that question for you, I will make sure that I connect you to the right person at the college so they can help you throughout the process. And just making sure that you know that you have, um, that you are able to say this college will work for me, this one is not. And all it takes is really just exploring, asking questions, and don't feel pressured to have an answer right away. Um, so right now, it's a good time for you to start exploring and asking questions. I know we're living in different times, um, but it will work out and we can still communicate even if it's through a virtual way. So make sure that you do that. But other than that, thank you so much for being here. And I wish you the best of luck in your future um, career pathway that you may take. And any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you, Daisy. That was wonderful. Uh, we are running short on time, so I'm going to just move and go directly to our next speaker, who is Jenny Serpa. She comes to us from the Northwest Indian College. She's going to talk a little bit about the programs that they offer there, the kind of supports that they have in place for their students, and, um, and also how to pay for college. So, Jenny, are you with us? Jenny, can you unmute yourself? I am here. There we go. Welcome. I um, so, uh, my name is Jenny Serpa. I am the Extended Campus Site Manager at the Northwest Indian College. Um, and I'm actually joined today also by Arinda Goddard. Uh, and if we have some time to hear from her um, towards the end, I, uh, I do hope that I will try to keep some time aside for her. Um, and so Northwest Indian College is uh, a tribal college. Um, and one of the things I think when I was, uh, you know, a high school student looking at colleges and, and universities, I didn't even know that tribal colleges and universities existed. Um, and so I really wanted to, take some time and talk a little bit about that. Um, there are uh, about 38 across the nation uh, with various um, levels of accreditation. Um, the only one in the state of Washington is Northwest Indian College, um, but we do have many campuses. And so our main campus is based in the Lummi Nation, but we also have Swinomish, Kalela, Muckleshoot, Nisqually, Fort Gamble. And we also have one um, in Idaho, which is the Nez Perce. Um, we are currently all online right now because of this heckening, um, but we are um, still much are still very much in our learning communities um, with our host tribes. I want to thank um, uh, Daisy for mentioning Open Door. Um, so we are also an open door college. That means as long as you have your high school diploma or GED, uh, you can apply to the college and we will accept you. Um, if you are really struggling with math or um, you know, your writing needs a little bit of work, we have classes that help build you up to um, college level and get you ready to be very successful um, in the remaining classes. So at Northwest Indian College, um, we have a, a variety of associates and bachelor's degrees. Um, you'll notice here that we don't have uh, that many in the sciences. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in that 
um, we have a bachelor's of science. So we no longer have our two year associates of science degree. Um, we do have some other technical degrees, but they are not in the science field. Um, so our bachelor's of science is in native environmental sciences. It's a very broad degree. And uh, one of the, the benefits of having a very broad degree like this is that um, we actually allow students to kind of create and curtail and develop their own um, focus and curriculum. So there's core classes that you need to take in the sciences. Everybody has to take chemistry. Everybody has to take statistics. Um, but if you want to really focus on biology, uh, maybe on or on um, fisheries or on um, genetics, you can do that um, underneath our bachelor's of science degree. We are fully accredited. We typically start off students with their associate's degree. Uh, we do have some focused associate's degrees as well as the general direct transfer. Um, so if you want to come and start with a business associate, uh, we can still include some of those um, science classes that will then curtail into the Native Environmental Sciences Bachelor's of Science degree. Um, that being said, we are fully transferable. So um, because we are accredited, so you can take our associates or any of our classes and transfer them to a different college or university. And, um, you know, I, I showed the map a little bit earlier. So we are, are hosted by our host tribe um, as a college. And so we offer our classes through a place-based lens. So if you take classes at our Nisqually location, we talk a lot about Nisqually, Medicine Creek Treaty, um, the history and the language from this particular region um, and this particular tribe. Um, if you were to take them at Muckleshoot, you would be taking um, uh, Muckleshoot language and Muckleshoot history. Um, not that we are exclusive, right? We include other aspects as well as the um, the broad uh, tribal history of the, of the country um, and certainly pre-contact. Uh, but we, we try to focus on supporting that connection to, to place, right? Make it meaningful. And so we actually get to include um, origin stories. We get to bring in speakers from the community. Uh, people get to bring in their own um, examples of plants or experiences or their family stories and people have connection to um, what we're talking about. Um, so in terms of educational support, uh, you know, we are very similar to any other college or university. You're going to have your advisors and staff, uh, you're going to have faculty, you're going to have tutors and mentors. Uh, I think one of the things with a tribal college or university is that we are usually quite small. And so your advisors, your staff, your faculty, your tutors, and your mentors are all going to know you. Um, I manage a site at the Quali site, and I have about 70 students. Um, I can name every single one of them. I know what they're what they're working on. I know their families. I know who they're connected to. I typically know where they're working, what they're working towards. Um, so when things come, opportunities come across my desk, I'm like, oh, this will be great for. Um, so we work. Uh, really well together to try and support students getting to the, their goal. Um, we also, of course, across our different campuses have uh, both our tribal college library at the main campus and our extended campus sites, as well as um, working with tribes on their, uh, sorry, just DM doing a chat, um, across their sites as well. Um, of course, we have the, the national level programs like BFET, which were already mentioned. If you're on any kind of um, food stamps or other support from DSHS, we can sometimes see if tuition is covered. Um, we have our own foundation that, that fundraises for scholarships. And we also have a lot of partnerships, just like any other college or university. Um, we have a really strong connection with NASA, as well as National Park Service. So we, um, at the main campus, particularly have a student group that focuses on, um, ro not robotics, excuse me, um, rockets, uh, and that's their connection with NASA. And then um, down at Nisqually, we have a strong connection with the National Park Service. 
uh, we're actually looking at trying to create a certificate program um, as part of a stepping stone towards an AA and then a BA uh, for folks that want to go into working with national parks. Um, of course, we have other uh, scholarships and other things that uh, can certainly boost um, student support. Uh, in terms of our science degree, um, we have a lot of donors who are fantastic. Uh, you've already heard from some of them. I'm not going to uh, put them out there. Uh, but our science folks often get about 10,000 a year in student scholarships. Um, and so I just want to say that we have a lot of support for students uh, in pursuing the sciences. We just want to really help you guys get where you're going. Um, and I have lost my sense of time, so yell at me when I have two minutes. Uh, we do a lot of field trips when we're in person. I'm, this has been sorely missed, I think, this year. Uh, we are working really hard to try and do um, individual field trips, so guided, um, guided field trips through either uh, written or uh, voice or video um, into these areas that we would normally go. We would normally go out on the sound. We would normally go to the river. We would normally go visit um, our connections at Northwest Trek and the National Park Service. Uh, all of these places we can't go as a group anymore, so it's been, been a bit of a struggle. Um, but we do have running starts. Um, so it's open to all high school um, students who are designated as juniors and seniors at their high school. You do have to test into English 100. Um, not that you have to take English 100, but you do have to test into English 100. And then that opens up running start to, for you to take any classes that you would need towards your high school graduation. Um, so you can earn credits towards high school and Again, we are accredited, so they go towards college as well, and you can transfer them anywhere or stay with us. Um, sometimes this also lends itself towards credit catch up um, in that some of our classes actually are more than what you would need um, for high school. And so if you're missing a few credits uh, for some reason, I know some, sometimes people get sick or something happens uh, or you transfer from one school to another, and uh, you just find yourself a credit or too shy, this is a great opportunity um, if you are feeling ready. And since we are online, you can take classes online. Um, in terms of financial aid, I think um, uh, Daisy did this really well. Uh, reminder that SAPSA opens super early. It's already open for next year, it opens October 1st. You do have to apply every year. Um, but you don't have to apply every quarter. That's kind of nice. Um, and you only need the one application. You can list tons of colleges on there to see what kind of financial aid packages you would get at different colleges. Um, that's a, a tip I would suggest that you do. Um, you do have to have a, a FAFSA on file, even if you don't qualify for, let's say, um, Pell Grant or scholarship opportunities you almost always have to have a FAFSA on file. Um, Pell Grant, of course, is free money. I'm sure you guys have talked about that. But in terms of scholarships, one of the things I wish I had known was that you can apply as early as a freshman um, in high school. So if you're a freshman, sophomore, if you're a junior, you can be applying the scholarships now and use them once you get to college. Um, in terms of the last kind of tips and tricks, um, and then if we have just a second, I'll let Arinda introduce herself and, and share a little bit of her experience. Um, attend guest lecture, or excuse me, attend events. Um, talk to the guest lecturers after the class. Uh, they're usually connected to jobs and to um, the field that you might be interested in. Volunteer tons of places, join student clubs and activities. Um, there are so many people I know working in my field that I met through clubs or conferences. Um, always be ready to break the ice and introduce yourself. Have a really quick elevator speech of who you are, what, what degree are you working on, or, or what school are you working toward, and then how it's going to affect your community, right? 
I, uh, you know, my name is Jenny Serpa. I am working towards a doctorate in higher education. And I really hope to bring this back so that we can actually build our own college at my, um, my community. Uh, it's good to have a list of things that you are seeking or need. I could really use funding for my doctorate program. Um, and also for uh, honorariums to provide those that are supporting me with interviews and things like that. Um, send follow-up connections. If they give you their email and you wanna connect with them someday in the future, send an email the day that you get it or the next day so that it's in the system, so that it's in your email. You might lose that scrap of paper that you, that you had it on. You might lose the chat. Um, always have a professional email name for your personal email. Uh, it's just good practice, but also um, you're gonna get more responses. You're not gonna get stuck in spam filters. So I just kinda wanna throw that out there. Uh, if we do have a few seconds and Narinda can introduce herself and maybe share just a quick thing, that would be fantastic. Um, happy to answer any questions. And I just wanna promote education, promote science, and uh, just say how much I'm grateful for the invite to be here today. Thank you. Jenny, thank you so much. Uh, that was great information. And yes, uh, I'm not sure who you brought with you. I didn't quite catch your name, but uh, if she wants to go ahead and unmute herself and introduce herself, we have about 30 seconds before we need to move on to the next. Hello, my name is Erinda Goddard um, with Jenny at the Northwest Indian College at the Nisqually site. Um, it's been a pleasure um, being a student here at Nisqually, it has really built me up to give me that voice. Um, it's shown me that, you know, you can take this education, but make it your own because, you know, we're all from different tribes, we're different nations, but you can create it so that it's more personalized to you and what you want to study. Um, it's given me the opportunity to dig deep into my tribal history and um, explore and also um, dig into little different things that um, aren't out there for the public. And, you know, even with the art that is provided at the college, beading and weaving and carving and whichever form line design, um, you know, it's it's interesting. Like I said, it, this college really um, helps give and support the students to give them their own voice. Thank you. Thank you, Orinda. That was wonderful. We appreciate meeting you and telling us your story. Next up, we have Janet De La Cruz from University of Washington, Tacoma. And she's going to talk to you a little bit about some of the programs that they have there that are unique to UW Tacoma. Janet, welcome. Hey there. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Also in the chat, I shared a link to a form that allows you to be added to our contact list. So that will um, mean that you receive emails and stuff in the mail if you want to receive information from us. But like Richard said, my name is Janet Go Cruz and I am an admissions advisor at the University of Washington, Tacoma. So I support students who are looking to, to transition from high school to UWT upon their graduation. Um, I'm going to be sharing a little bit about what the university offers and our admissions requirements. So the University of Washington Tacoma is part of the University of Washington tri-campus system, which means that we are a sister campus to UW Seattle and UW Bothell. At UW Tacoma, students are earning the same degree that students at UW Seattle or UW Bothell would. It really just comes down to the overall experience that a student is looking to have because the environment and culture is going to look very different on each of the campuses. If you're a student who does really well in small learning environments, wants to be part of a community where you know peers and professors, then we're really the place for that. Um, students can really thrive in the type of environment that we offer. Like I mentioned, we are a small school with just over 5,000 students on our campus. So again, this allows you to build those relationships and with professors and peers that can be really meaningful and transformative and add to the experience that you have as a student, but also beyond your time at UW Tacoma. And 56% um, of our students identify as first gen. So this means that they're the first in their family to attend a four-year college and university. That is a very um, large part of our student population. So we definitely want to ensure that they have the resources in place to be successful as they transition socially and academically. Uh, and we have resources to do that. I'll actually be talking about one a little bit later. 
Um, another thing that I want to point out is that UW Tacoma is considered one of the most diverse institutions in um, the United States. So this diversity is definitely reflective of the community that we're a part of. And you'll see it on in your classroom as you're walking around campus. That we definitely re um, reflect that community, the Tacoma community. Like the name says, we are located in down in Tacoma, specifically downtown, right across the street from all the major museums in the area. And where we're located is really ideal. Um, it gives students access to engage with the community, um, to step off campus, and um, not just engage socially, but also in meaningful ways um, related to their coursework and whatever it is that they're majoring in, um, and build those relationships that are going to be super important as they're graduating and looking for jobs after um, college. With that in mind, we definitely think of the city as part of our campus. So students are going to be encouraged through assignments, through internship or volunteer opportunities to engage with the city because it has so much to offer. I grew up in this area and I went to college in the area, but I definitely, my perspective on Tacoma changed as I was experiencing college. Um, so you're definitely gonna see the area with a different perspective once you um, experience college and um, some of the social things that you get to live as a college student. Um, again, because we're because of where we're located, we're, we have some really great relationships with employers in the area. You can see a list of potential employers um, here in the Puget Sound. My sister graduated from the University of Washington, Tacoma, and upon graduating, she had a job offer from Amazon. Um, and that was because of um, the relationship that she managed to build at U of T. And then um, she had a work study opportunity that really lended itself to what they were looking for in the position that she um, did at Amazon. One of the most important parts of a college experience is being involved on campus. A majority of your time is definitely going to be spent on academics, you know, going to class, studying, preparing um, for tests, writing essays, but you're also going to have a lot of free time because when you're in college, you're not in class every day from eight to five. You might have a class Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or classes Tuesday and Thursday that meet for an hour, an hour and a half. So you're going to have all this free time. Um, and of course, some of that time is going to be spent studying, but the other part is, you know, engaging with the campus community, building um, these meaningful relationships, friendships, um, and building a presence on campus. So we definitely encourage you to step out of the classroom and engage socially on our campus. On our campus, you can do that by being part of a club, um, participating in intramural sports, a work study, study abroad. It really is up to you what you engage in, but, um, I definitely encourage you to step out of your comfort zone um, because it's gonna add to your overall experience. And this is really the way that you start building your own network that you can use after um, graduating and while you're at the University of Tacoma. Some of the most important resources on our campus for students are the pantry, the TLC, and the First Gen program. The pantry is a resource for students who are facing food insecurity, you want to make sure that students have that resource to be successful um, in their work. Um, during the pandemic, we have definitely switched how students access this resource. Um, during regular operations, students would just come to the pantry whenever they needed something. But through COVID, we've set up a system where students can essentially order um, what they need, and then it'll be either dropped off or they'll have a time schedule where they can pick up their items. The TLC is the Teaching and Learning Center. This is where you, students can get additional support on their academic work outside of the classroom. Um, students can receive help on math, science, and writing. I really encourage you to use this resource. Um, it's gonna help you be successful and do the best work possible, and you're paying for it through your student fees. So definitely take advantage of this resource on our campus. And then, like I mentioned, a large population of our student body identifies as first gen. Um, so we do offer a first gen program that was created by first generation college students on our campus. And this is just a place where students who identify as first gen um, can come together and um, engage in a way that is really genuine and meaningful. I went to a school that didn't offer this when I was a student, um, and it felt really isolating for me um, because a lot of students, the people I was meeting 
um, didn't identify as first gen. So having this resource on campus means having a community that understands where you're coming from, understands your perspective. You can start building those relationships that can be really transformative and um, influential and helpful in your time at UW Tacoma. Because we're a small school, 100% of our classes are taught by faculty. This means um, that all classes will be taught by your professor. You're never gonna be in a class taught by a graduate student or TA. Um, this is very, that's usually very common at bigger institutions like UW Seattle, but here because the classes are so small, you're always gonna be with a faculty member. What's great about this is that they get to know you um, beyond just your name and that you're a student in their class. I would really encourage all students to engage with their professor outside of the classroom, definitely make, um, make use of office hours because your professors will often be one of the best resources you have on campus. They um, are there to mentor, they're there to guide you as you're transitioning to the um, academic setting from high school to college. Um, and at UW Tacoma, this is really what professors are looking for, um, you know, building these relationships with students and serving as mentors. I still keep in touch with the few professors that I had, um, and they really supported me, especially as I was transitioning out of college and into the workforce. They um, wrote me letters of recommendation um, and just really prepared me for what was going to lay beyond the safety net of college. On the screen, you'll see a list of the majors that we offer on our campus. I did want to point out a few based on some of the, um, of the, the things that we were discussing today, some of the different tracks. Um, so for students interested in business, we do have the Milgard School of Business, which houses five different programs. What's really great about the Milgard School of Business is that um, they have a first, first year direct entry program. So students can indicate on their application that business is their preferred major, and then they'll be um, selected or considered for that first, um, first year direct entry. Um, so this means you'll automatically be part of the School of Business and receive additional scholarships and professional development opportunities. And then for human services, we have the School of Social Work and Criminal Justice. So those two, if you're interested in like helping people, um, helping communities, that's definitely a great, um, two great options. You can also consider healthcare leadership. So, and this also ties in, I think, with healthcare, um, health sciences. So we have biomedical sciences and an RN to BSN. Um, something that I do wanna point out with healthcare leadership is that it's a program designed for students who are interested in supporting areas of healthcare, not necessarily being a practitioner working on patients. So this is if you want to work in administrative, policy, leadership, um, anything related to not working directly on a person. Um, and it's really great because there's lots of opportunities in healthcare, and this really opens up the door for you to work um, beyond being a nurse or a doctor or a direct practitioner. And then our RN to BSN is really unique on our campus. Um, for a student to be eligible for this program, they do have to start at a community college and then transfer to UW Tacoma to complete the BSN. So you already have to be a registered nurse. And then for natural sciences, I did wanna point out the environmental science program. Um, this program has three different tracks. It's um, first conservation biology, ecology, and then geoscience. What I really like about this major is that it was designed to be um, to really incorporate active learning and experiential learning. So you're definitely gonna be stepping outside of the classroom and um, getting that hands-on experience. And um, this is really great if you're um, looking to like when I do research, um, because again, it builds in that experience, um, experiential learning and active learning. And then we also have environmental sustainability. So if you're interested in policy and conservation, that's also an, another great option. Um, on the screen, you're going to see our admissions requirements. What is really um, cool about this event is that I'm getting to connect with students that I haven't been able to and who might not know about the Pathway to Promise program that we have in partnership with the Puyallup School District. And we are finalizing a partnership with Chief Lashai. Um, so this will be applicable to Chief Lashai students as well. Um, so essentially, this Pathway to Promise program is a partnership that we have with certain school districts and programs 
that provides students with assured admission criteria to U of T. So as long as students meet the requirements listed on the screen, they will have a guaranteed spot at U of Tacoma. So these requirements include meeting the high school caters. So four years of English, three years of math, three years of social science, two years of lab science, two consecutive years of the same world language, one senior year math-based quantitative course, half a year of an academic elective and half a year of fine visual or performing arts, as, long, as well as a 2.7 GPA and a quality personal statement and activity log. Starting this admission cycle, we've removed the requirement of um, SAT or ACT. That's now optional. So students only need to provide that if they want to. One of the most important things to consider um, when you're thinking about college is what it's gonna cost you and your family. At UW Tacoma, the total cost of attendance ranges between 20 to $27,000. And that consists of um, tuition, room and board, books, transportation, and personal expenses. The total cost is gonna vary from student to student um, just because room and board, books, transportation, and personal expenses are gonna look different for every single student. But the tuition price will be the same for any student who is a full-time student at U of T. I think twenty to twenty-seven thousand dollars is a lot of money. I know I didn't have this money when I was going to college. My mom didn't have this money either in her bank account or like saved in a piggy bank or something. Um, so a big part of financing your education is applying to scholarships and um, applying to financial aid. Um, at U of T, students are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships when they apply, but we also have scholarships that students can apply to after they're admitted. And then one of our biggest sources of financial aid is the Husky Promise. And the Husky Promise is an award the university grants to students who have financial need. All students have to do to be eligible for the Husky Promise is be a Washington State resident and apply for admission and financial aid by the priority date. So during this time, um, we have limited our interactions with students to a virtual platform, um, but there is a variety of ways to connect with us. Presentations like this, we do offer virtual tours. And for students who are seniors this year and are considering applying, we do have um, application workshops and um, personal statement workshops. So there's definitely ways for you to connect with us. And on the screen, you'll see my contact information. I can also include it in the chat, but um, I don't know if there's time for questions. If not, feel free to email me. I can always, um, I'm happy to meet with students one-on-one -on -one to discuss what their interests are, how to apply or how to plan to be a competitive applicant. Thank you very much, Janet. We really appreciate your presentation. Thank you to all of our educational uh, presenters.